The land explored by our ancestors extends from the Altai to the White Sea. The scientific expedition, Shells of Nomads, continues to unveil the path of our forefathers. A group of scientists led by Pilgrim of the 21st century, Saparis Kakov, has already visited more than 50 countries. Scientists reveal the exciting secrets of the past. Watch an amazing story of a great journey in Trails of Nomads program. Today's Trails of Nomads episode presents The period of Sultan Baibar's reign is called the Golden Age of Egypt. What documents confirm that? Why did the Kipchaks get the right to change the fabric covering the Kaaba? Which of our ancestors resumed the work of the Al-Ajar Madrasa, an advanced Islamic educational institution that teaches four madhabs? Famous Cairo Bazaar Khan Al Halili is the largest and oldest market in Africa. Everyone who ever visits it will be able to truly penetrate the atmosphere of Egypt. Here one can also feel the spirit of the Great Steppe. Seven centuries ago, during the reign of Bey Bars and Sultan of Egypt, kumis, mare's milk and horse meat were traded in this market. Sheep, horses, camels and goats grazed on the Nile banks with succulent grass. At the top of the highest pyramid, they put the largest yurt. The team of the Trails of Nomads scientific expedition tried to find out what documents point on these events that took place more than 700 years ago. Our great ancestor Sultan Baibars placed a 12-winged yurt on the top of the pyramid. In fact, over many centuries, the sun and wind have long dulled the sharpness of the top of the pyramid, and indeed, even the largest yurt can easily be put there. The valiant son of the Kazakh steppes by bars becoming the supreme ruler in a foreign land remained faithful to his native language and traditions. He used to drink kumis, eat horse meat, and live in a yurt. But why did he put the steppe dwelling on top of the pyramid? Presumably, there was a reason. The reign of Baibars is considered the golden age of the Islamic religion. The Kipchak Sultan made great effort to this development. The pyramid is a symbol of polytheism. There is no god but Allah, Baibars believed. He erected a house on the tomb of the pharaoh, who was considered a god. <laughs> Kazakhs have a saying, sand will never become a stone and a slave won't be a ruler. But it turned out that there are exceptions. A pyramid is built of blocks made of sand and the slaves created the Kipchak state in Egypt. The expedition members searched for the mausoleum of Aitigen al Bunduktar, lost between the houses. This is a monument of the man who bought Baibars for 800 dirhams in the Damascus Bazaar from an Italian merchant. So, a part of al Bunduktari was added to the name of Baibars. He was brought to Damascus from the medieval city of Kaffa, that is, from Theodosia, on the Crimean Peninsula. Then, he was 10 years old. Despite his position, he did not lose heart and did not lose vital energy. These qualities were transferred to him from the father of Jamak and mother Ainek. I have special respect for the Kazakh people in Kazakhstan. This land gave us Sultan Baibars. He stopped the Crusades and the Mongol invaders. We highly appreciate the role of Sultan Baibars in protecting the interests of the Islamic religion and the entire Muslim world. Thanks to this outstanding personality, the Egyptian people now adhere to Sunni Islam. 
Мы крепко, мы хорошо оцениваем роль султана Барса в защите ислама, исламского мира. People expressed immense gratitude to Bai Boris when he was alive. They continue to thank him now. This is an outstanding statesman and commander who has repeatedly saved Egypt and other countries from the enslavement and oppression of the conquerors. Mastering the martial art, thanks to his sharp mind, he managed to get rid of the slavish stigma. The skilled Kipchak attracted the attention of the Egyptian ruler As Salih Ayub, who in 1246 appointed him the leader of his personal guard. For four years, Baibars managed to achieve heights in his military career. The world learned about outstanding commander. After the Battle of Al-Mansur, this battle stopped the crusade of Louis IX. And in 1260, the Kipchak Mamluks led by Baibars, for the first time in history, dealt a crushing blow to the Mongol army. It was after this victory that the military leader received popular recognition. The streets of Cairo met him as a sultan. In the same 1260, the son of the Kipchak steppe was erected on the Egyptian throne. The period when Egypt was ruled by the Kipchak Mamluks, including the Sultan Baibars, is a great era in the history of the country, because at that time the country had political stability, the economy was booming, the well-being of the people improved, conditions were created for spiritual development. This is the heyday of the Islamic religion. Therefore, the reign of the Kipchak Sultans is considered important not only for Egypt, but also for the entire Muslim world. The development of cooperation between Muslim countries is one of the main directions of the state policy of Sultan Baibars. The outstanding strategist understood that the enemy can be rebuffed only by joining forces. After the raid of the Mongol army led by Hulagu, Baibars took under his guardianship one of the descendants of the Caliphate ruler, Abu Qasim ibn Barakat. The Caliphate centered in Cairo was later revived. This was a great event for all Muslims since the Abbasid dynasty that ruled there originated from Abbas bin Abdul Abdul Muttalib, the grand brother of the Prophet Muhammad. In 1257, after the capture of Baghdad, the ruling caliph was expelled. In 1260, Baibars invited him to Cairo. However, Baibars himself ruled the caliphate. His recommendations were then a guide to action for all Arab countries. Sultan Baibars, who has proved his self-sufficiency more than once in word and deed, was called Rukn ad-Din. This title in translation means protector of religion. The authority of the Sultan in the Islamic world also influenced stability within the state. Civic strife and litigation for power ceased. There were more and more allies and countries that supported Egyptian politics. Friendly relations were established with the historical homeland, so the long-standing goal of the Mamluks came true. Desh the Kipchak Khan Berke understood that the Kipchak warriors who were in power in Egypt had enough strength to withstand the Mongol army. They were not only physically strong but also had advanced weapons. Therefore, they were strong both on land and on water. In 1261-1262, Sultan Baibars made an attempt to establish cooperation with the Golden Horde. In 1263, he received an answer from Khan Berke. Witnessing Hulagu's predatory appetite, he understood that alliance with the Kipchak Mamluks was important for Dishti Kipchak. Therefore, Berke established an alliance with Sultan Baibars. It is worth noting that Egypt, ruled by the Kipchak Mamluks, became the first state to recognize the independence of Dishti Kipchak from the Mongols. Sultan Baibars was a visionary politician. When the enemy approached, he did not build fortresses but bridges with allies. Thanks to this quality, he managed to defeat the crusaders at the Mongol conquerors. Baibars stopped the onslaught of the formidable army of Hulagu after the establishment of an alliance with the Golden Horde, Khan Berke. In 1277, in the battle on the plain of Elbistan, the Mamluks won a decisive victory over the Mongols and ensured security for the entire Muslim world. After eliminating the threat of enslavement in Egypt, a heyday began. The economy developed, the welfare of citizens improved, the Sultan himself periodically took to the streets of Cairo and got acquainted with the situation of the people. 
The sultans of the Mamluk dynasty were fair rulers. It is no coincidence, for example, that Sultan Baibars was popularly called the protector of the poor in the month of Ramadan by his decree all people in need were fed for free. There are songs telling about the nobility of the ruler, which the people sang in Cairo Bazaar. All these facts, of course, bring Kazakhstan and Egypt closer together and develop cultural and historical ties. At all times, the rule of law is necessary to establish justice in society. With this in mind, Sultan Baibars created a Qadi court, which, based on Sharia law, examined cases in all four madhabs. There was a supreme regulatory authority. All this was an innovation in Egyptian law, and the reforms carried out were relevant until the 19th century. In the state of Sultan Baibars, such vices as drunkenness, violence, treason were considered unacceptable. Once Baibar, seeing a warrior riding a horse while trampling crops, ordered him to be severely punished. He said the following, I undertake campaigns and declare war to protect Muslims from meanness and treachery, but how can you harm your compatriots so easily? Sultan Baibars influenced the Islamic University of Al-Ajar to be Sunni. The educational institution was originally built as a mosque. The founders were the Fatimids. Salahaddin Ayyub later closed the mosque. After almost one century, Baibars opened it again and built additional premises, audiences for students. An advanced Islamic university that provides knowledge on four madhabs was created thanks to Sultan Baibars. On his orders, repair work was carried out in mosques in the Arab countries. It is no coincidence that it was Baibars who received the honorable right to replace the sacred fabric that covers the main Muslim shrine, the Kaaba. Sham, Yelne, Egypt, Syria, Palestine, Israel, Iraq, Turkey, and Jarza. Damascus, Egypt, Syria, Palestine, Israel, Iraq, half of Turkey and the current territory of Saudi Arabia were then called, in one word, Hijaz. This included Mecca and Medina. At that time, only Kipchak sultans could appoint naibs to Mecca and Medina, and so it went on for more than 130 years. Sultan Baibars is a person who, both in word and in deed, has proved his commitment to Islam. One of the confirmations is the Zahir Baibars Mosque, which he built in 1268. At that time, it was the largest Muslim temple with a length of 108 and a width of 105 meters. Sacred verses from the Quran in Kazakh patterns and ornaments were inscribed on the walls of the mosque. The area where the mosque was located is still called az -Zahir. The Kipchak Mamluks left a very large mark in the history of Egypt. They paid special attention to cultural and religious development. At that time, the most advanced construction technologies were used in the construction of the Sultan Baibars Mosque. Multi-colored marble and precious woods were brought from the city of Jaffa. Participants of the scientific expedition have repeatedly visited the Sultan Baibars Mosque. This video was shot in 2016. Of course, wars and natural disasters affected the current state of the temple. The foundation and walls have collapsed, but the columns are still in good condition. As a result of the Kazakh-Egyptian agreements, it was decided to allocate funds for the reconstruction of the facility. However, restoration work dragged on.
Reconstruction of the Sultan Baybars Mosque began in 2007. Then the Egyptian side estimated the project at $12 million. According to a bilateral agreement, Kazakhstan should have provided $4 million of this amount and Egypt agreed to cover the rest amount. Kazakhstan has fulfilled its obligations and Egypt in connection with the revolutions and the political crisis from 2009 to 2011 did not have the opportunity to allocate the money. During the work of Kazakh scientists in Egypt in 2016, the head of the scientific expedition, Sapari Skakov, met with the representatives of the company responsible for the reconstruction. According to them, they have fully mastered the funds allocated by Kazakhstan. The money was spent on building a system that protects the building from ground water, pouring a new foundation and erecting the walls of the mosque. To continue the reconstruction, funding is needed, the contractor noted. Approximately 5 million US dollars are needed to complete the project. There is no money, so the work is suspended. If the issue of financing is resolved, the facility will be completed within two years. However, the Egyptian side is in no hurry to allocate funds. The crisis has frozen many projects in the country. A year later, the participants of the scientific expedition again visited the facility. The situation has changed for the better. There are positive changes in the country. We have seen that reconstruction work is resuming. Of course, there is no high pace, but still the progress is noticeable. Contractors assure that they will complete the work within a year. We rely on their promise. This is a very important historical site. This is a sacred place for every Kazakh. Сакральный орын деп айтуға болыр әді. Қазақстанның адамдарымында келу көрек, көру көрек, нақтан ішпен айтып жүргі де болады. Sultan Baybars ruled Egypt for almost 17 years. He possessed immense authority and was respected among the people. However, the Lord himself had dreamed all his life of getting to his native land. He missed the smell of bitter wormwood. The participants of the scientific expedition partially fulfilled the desire of the Sultan. They brought a handful of native land to his grave. We specially brought a piece of Kazakh land to the mosque of our ancestor, Sultan Baybars. Bismillahi Rahmani Rahim. Sprinkle here. Who knows, perhaps our relatives are among these people on the streets of Cairo. They have one blood with Kazakhs. Samia Baybars is a world-famous descendant of Sultan Baybars. In 2016, a meeting was specially organized with her. The expedition leader, Sapari Skakov, recorded an exclusive interview. Sultan Baybars is a distinguished commander, an outstanding statesman and politician, and a very wise man. At the same time, he was a very simple person. He was never arrogant. Sometimes he personally took part in the construction of some important facilities. He himself could lay out the brickwork. He was always with the people, tried in every possible way to alleviate the fate of ordinary citizens. He did not raise taxes, but instead reduced them. He covered all state needs at the expense of income received during military campaigns. People greatly respected the ruler. During a meeting in 2016, Sapari Skakov invited Samia Baybars to visit her homeland. After some time, the descendant of our great ancestor took advantage of the offer and came to the land of the fathers. The life and work of Sultan Baybars still require study and new research. His bright path must be promoted in both Egypt and Kazakhstan. We need new literature works, new films about him. I think that in Cairo, and in the capital of Kazakhstan, it is necessary to establish monuments to him. Sultan Baybars built madrasa along with mosques, one of them called Al Zahiri, and it is located in Cairo district of Hussein near the famous Khan Al Halili Bazar. This educational institution, there was a library, 
with a rich book fund. The Sultan also built canals and bridges. In particular, by his order, the largest waterworks was built on the Nile River. In addition, there were a huge number of other buildings and structures that were the architectural decoration of Cairo. Many of them have survived to the present day. This is a world cultural heritage. Therefore, bringing them into proper condition and passing them on to future generations is a task for the humanity.